The next type of indeterminate form we'll talk about is of the form 0 times positive or negative infinity, or vice versa, positive negative infinity times 0. And the idea is you have two functions, f of x times g of x. What we're going to do is we're basically going to make this into an indeterminate fraction by putting, leaving one in the numerator and putting one over the other in the denominator. Um, and it doesn't matter which one you pit, put on top or bottom. Algebraically, I should be careful though, there's definitely some problems, like the one I'm about to do, where um, you may take one over one of the functions and put it in the denominator and find that you're actually getting a more complicated expression. Um, if that happens, just go back and try putting the other one in the denominator. So in this case, I've got the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of square root of x times ln of x. Notice as x approaches 0 from the right, square root of x is just going to be 0. ln of x, though, approaches negative infinity. So I have this indeterminate form. And I've got two choices. I could either take 1 over ln of x and put that in the bottom. But I think when you go and start taking derivatives, you're going to find that that actually gives you a slightly more complicated expression. So my x to the 1 half, I'm going to move him to the denominator and make it x to the negative 1 half times ln of x. And you can convince yourself this is now going to be of the form infinity over infinity. So I'll use L'Hopital's rule. Well, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. In the denominator, I'll get negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves. And now I'm going to do some algebra to clean this up. So I could pull the negative 1 half out front as a negative 2 when I flip it and multiply it. I have um, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And if I think about this as being 1 over x to the 3 halves, if I multiply it, I'm going to get x to the 3 halves over x to the first. And this is going to leave me with, whoops, I left out my negative 2. I'll just squeeze him back in there. When I put that back in there, I'll have negative 2. And I'll be left with square root of x. So I'll have x to the 1 half when I simplify that part down. And now as x approaches 0 from the right, well, square root of x is going to approach 0. So you have negative 2 times 0 or 0 as your answer. So it says the answer to the original problem is just going to be simply equal to 0. And again, be careful, 0 times negative infinity, you can't conclude that it equals 0. All it says is one thing's getting small, one thing's getting big. Well, in this case, the small thing's getting small, I guess, faster. You can think about it that way. Let's do one more of these indeterminate products is what they're known as. So let's look at the limit as x approaches 0 of cotangent of 2x divided by sine of 6x. Whoops, I wrote that down wrong. This should be multiplied by sine of 6x. I was going to say it's not going to be a, a product then. As x approaches 0, you'll get cotangent of 0. And if you think about the graph of cotangent, this actually goes to infinity. Sine of 0 is 0. So again, we're getting this indeterminate form, um, infinity times 0. Again, I have to put one of these in the denominator. I'm going to put the cotangent in the denominator. And I could, again, I could write it 1 over cotangent. But 1 over cotangent is the same thing as just tangent of 2x, sine of 6x. And again, notice I've basically turned this back into an indeterminate quotient. This is now going to be of the form 0 over 0. You don't have to check that. Um, it's always going to turn into an indeterminate form, but just pointing it out. So now I've got the limit as x approaches 0. The derivative of sine is going to be cosine of 6x times 6. The derivative of tangent is secant squared of 2x 
times 2. And as x approaches 0, you're going to get cosine of 0. Well, cosine of 0 is 1, so you'll get 1 times 6. You'll get secant squared of 0. So secant of 0, that's 1 over cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so secant squared of 0 is also going to be 1. So we're simply left with 1 times 2, or 3 as our solution in this problem. And this again is going to be the basic idea in all the L'Hopital rule cases. You're going to try to usually just pretty much turn them back into an indeterminate um, quotient if you can and go from there.